All right, guys, let's have a look at 7.5 interaction range. Okay. So let's start off here with this. Um, what we see is that not all objects interact with each other in the same way. Okay, some objects don't interact with others. Um, it says here most types of interaction, okay occurs only between certain kinds of objects. Okay, so for example, two objects that are magnetic interact with each other, um, but different objects won't interact with each other. Now what's interesting is we classify things actually by the way they interact, right? We, we give objects attributes or properties but what's interesting is that these, these attributes or properties are actually defined by the way they interact. Okay? So the only way we have of determining the properties of something, of an object, is to see how it interacts. Okay. Now, now this is, uh, just to continue this point, we define the properties of matter, okay, whether something is magnetic, okay, these are these attributes, these properties. We define the pr these properties, whether something is magnetic, not magnetic, heavy, light, what color it is, red or green, what mass it is, okay, according to the interactions that this matter takes part in. What do we mean by that? mean that we define something to be magnetic if it interacts with iron. We define something to be heavy or light depending on how the earth pulls on it, whether it pulls on it strongly or not so strongly. And we define the properties being a, of a certain color depending on whether that matter interacts with green light or with red light. Okay? So the properties of matter are defined according to how that matter interacts. Right? With, with the things around it. Okay? I find that quite interesting. So the attributes we give to various types of matter are just a convenient way of indicating the types of interactions they take part in. Okay, I think that's hopefully quite clear. Now let's move on to something called the strength of the interaction. Now, every interaction has a strength and what we need to see is that it is a function of the distance separating the objects. Okay? I think we, we do have that kind of idea. So we'd like to define something called the interaction range. And this is the distance. We were talking about the distance here. This is the distance over which the interaction is appreciable. Right? Where you can where these objects can feel that interaction. Where they can feel the strength of the interaction. Okay. So we have long range interaction. Okay, now long range um, in this case is is like uh, millimeters, <laughs> and short range is much smaller than a few millimeters. So long range we consider two magnets. Okay, that they they can still feel the magnetic pull or uh, repulsion even a few millimeters apart. Whereas two billiard balls, they have to be extremely close to each other to feel any kind of uh, pull due to say the, the gravitational uh, forces okay so interaction range what is the range what is the distance over which their interaction can be felt okay so in terms of these long-range interactions we can define something called a field okay so, for example, an electrically charged object has an electric field. There's a magnetic field. 
is something called a gravitational field. And these fields uh, are really how you how an, another object experiences that that uh, that interaction over a certain distance. Okay. Now, what's quite interesting? Let me fix this quickly. Now, what is interesting is that um, actually, I just want to a field of an object contains information on the entire history of the object. Now, what do you mean by that? So, for example, if you dis if there's a disturbance in the field, okay, um, this disturbance travels outward like ripples on the surface of water. And so, what's interesting is, why do we say that a field contains the information on the entire history of the object? Say now, for example, you have a star that's emitting light, okay? So there's been now a disturbance in this object. It emits this light, and these, and this light travels through this field, okay? And here we are on Earth, and so we are actually seeing light from these stars that are millions of years old. So some of these stars may have already actually burnt out, but we are still experiencing their history. We are experiencing their entire history because of this field, because there's been a disturbance in the field, and this field contains all the information of the history of this object. That is quite fascinating. Okay, now finally, before we move on to 7.6, um, physicists now believe that every interaction is caused by corresponding exchange of gauge particles. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about this in the next section. These are how particles are um, exchanged. Okay, and as these particles are exchanged, that's actually how interactions occur. Okay, gauge particles. So we'll try to explain more of these in the next video. Okay, cheers.